Out of all the processors we've seen so far in PC handhelds, the one I've been the most down about has been Intel based ones. Because generally, don't get me wrong, they were never particularly amazing. Up until very recently at least. They had also had their own issues with drivers, game compatibility, game support, and things of that nature. So generally speaking, Intel integrated graphics and PC Intels had some issues. But over time, they did get significantly better to the point where they did directly compete with AMD's offerings. But AMD just generally had better support and higher tier performance chips. They were just simply better. But with the announcement of Intel's Panther like a few days ago, we might finally start to see some serious competition in this rapidly changing APU arms race we find Intel and AMD in, vying for control over this rapidly increasingly amazing PC handheld market, and potentially fighting over contracts for handhelds from Sony and Microsoft. Now that might have been a bit hyperbolic, but it still means a lot for the greater industry to see these two companies finally start to get very competitive in this PC handheld market. If what we are to be believed in these benchmarks that have been put out by a few media outlets and put out by Intel themselves, comparing Panther Lake to last generation hardware from them and some current gen stuff from AMD, specifically the 890M. WCCF Tech had a great benchmark I'll put up on screen now, comparing this new Panther Lake GPU APU situation and comparing it against the last generation offerings from Intel and the 890M integrated graphics, which is particularly interesting because that is the current APU found inside the Z2 Extreme. It is just a synthetic times by graphical benchmark, but it is pretty substantial, scoring shy of double the amount of points, which is amazing. But as we've seen before, just because it scores better in this particular benchmark doesn't strictly mean that's how it is going to react across the board. Lunar Lake in yes, some situations was significantly faster than the Z1 Extreme, but there are also cases where they were about the same. So it kind of makes sense when you see last gen Lunar Lake comparing against the A90M, it might perform a little bit better. But in terms of real world performance, that's not exactly how it shakes out. In the article that I refer to from WCCF Tech, they even stated that it gains 50% graphical performance compared to Lunar Lake, and it's comparable or on par with the NVIDIA RTX 3050 laptop variant, which is very cool. But at the end of the day, it just sort of isn't going to be that apples to apples. Yes, it should compare to it quite well, but that's going to be hyper dependent. Intel's processors, while still amazing, are hyper situational. In some cases, they can drastically outperform its competition. Sometimes it's basically the same. And I think most of what we are starting to see with these performance gains is that it's primarily due to one, obviously the newer architecture, but two, it has a higher core count, obviously. It goes from eight XE2 cores to 12 XE3 cores. Yes, there's that architectural improvement and all, but I think it's mostly down to the fact that it has an extra four cores. The biggest difference maker when it comes to the 890M in the last generation 780M that we saw in the Z1 Extreme, it was that it had four extra RDNA compute units in comparison to the last generation option. And if you look at the sort of newer 880M, the one that is directly sort of sequel to last generation 780M, they have the same amount of compute units and they perform basically the same. Yes, the 880M does perform better than the 780M in some cases, but it even when it does perform better, it's by like a handful of FPS and that's the generational difference. Not this huge leap forward that we're seeing between Lunar Lake and Panther Lake. That's mostly due to the higher XE core count. These CPUs are rated to be about 45 watts using this, you know, Panther Lake system or whatever. 
and that's gonna be pretty decent. But the Strix Halo APUs can go as high as 140 watts, which is amazing. But it is important to note that that is incredibly unlikely to find its way into any PC handheld. Currently, that's mostly only seen with the 8060S, the huge Chungo massive APU that we see in some of these more boutique manufacturers like INEO and GPD, which they're making their own solutions, whether that's an external battery pack, and a sort of cable dongloid attachment to connect it to the wall. And who's to say whether or not either is gonna be a preferred form factor, but that is kind of limitation when you think about it. There is no world where the Panther Lake processors can directly compete with the top end of Strix Halo. That is simply impractical way to think about it. Because like I said before, Strix Halo can go as high as like 120, 140 watts. While Panther Lake is topping out at 45 watts, it is not meant to go that high. And yet the performance they were able to achieve is incredibly exciting. If that can directly translate into some amazing actual gaming performance, that'd be fantastic. But with their history, it should provide genuine results, but the gap might not be nearly as large and not nearly as consistently found in titles all comparative against each other. I have no doubt this thing is going to probably be faster than the Z2 Extreme, and it might be the CPU of choice for many gamers who want something significantly better. But you also got to take it with its probable downsides of kind of wonky drivers potentially in the beginning, not fantastic performance in certain games and just the growing pains of a new architecture a new design style with intel you're not beta testing a product anymore like you were when you bought the very first original msi claw but it's still far away from the polished experience you get with an amd based handheld because while once again probably still not going to be an amazing experience because PC handles in general are kind of inherently janky. At least it's the kind of jank that you can deal with on an AMD based handheld rather than the potentially nightmare scenarios you can find yourself in with an Intel based system. It's still incredibly exciting and there will always be edge cases. So I hopefully see this as the first big step forward for Intel in making an amazing product because as it currently stands it's amazing but i would super duper wait to see this actually appear in a handheld before and even watch reviews before you even consider making the purchase because if anything intel has proven that they can make something good but you just can't trust them when they're just showing you numbers you need to wait to see this be tested by third parties I would love to hear what you guys think though. Would you be interested in buying a Panther like based handheld? Are you excited for the future of PC handhelds? And overall, what do you think of Panther like in Intel based handhelds? I would love to hear what you guys think about this down below. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All of those social media garbage down below. And last but not least, have a wonderful day.